Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? My name is Tay, and welcome back to my channel, Inspire Me, where I talk about current or relatable topics uh, from a godly perspective, and today's topic is called, How Much Will It Cost Me? Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is because I read this chapter, well not chapter, but this book in the Bible a lot of times, and it's like every time God gives me a different perspective, like different things to look at different aspects um i did this video on i did this video before but it was from another perspective i think it's called um step out of your familiarity or something but i'll make sure i um link it in my description but um also too yesterday when i was um uh, on my transportation i just looked at the street um sign and one of them said um um, Ruth Boulevard and 4th Street. So I'm like, okay, God, this is a sign. So I say, okay, I figured this was look at Ruth, the fourth chapter. So I couldn't look at it yesterday. But also, too, um, I think we was about to leave. We stopped for a while. So I was looking down, I think, on my phone. So we started moving. Then, like a little bit, seconds later, I just looked up and I looked up at the street, the uh, street sign. And this one said, Ruth Boulevard, Third Street. So I said, okay, <laughs> what's the odds of me looking at that? So I said, I figured it was my phone might be turning. It keeps turning up dark and light. I don't know. I'm trying to do it without holding it. But um, yeah. So I figured it was Ruth, the third chapter. So I couldn't read it last night or whatever like yesterday. So I'm reading it today. So. When I was reading it, I got another aspect of it. So, I'm going to be coming from the um, the reference. Scripture is going to actually be from Ruth, the third chapter, verse um, 12. And it's also going to be Ruth, the fourth chapter. Read all the fourth chapter, but I'm going to read verse 4 through 6. Alright, so let me just start off at Ruth, the third chapter, verse 12. All right, now this is on this. Oh Lord, I'm trying to do it. I'm moving it. Oh, <laughs> one second, yeah. All right, all right. So Ruth three twelve, and it says, "And now it, I'm sorry. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. Howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I." Now this is um. Boaz speaking, you feel me? He was saying, okay, and that you know that in that time it was a tradition to you know be married to in that lineage. So if something happened to your spouse, you know your husband, then you would pretty much it would be known to marry like the brother or if he was single or you know the cousin or uncle. You feel me? It was normal. But if you see it now, it's like, okay, if your husband died and you married a brother, it's like, uh, that's frowned upon, you know? <laughs> but back then, that was normal. So, um, but also saying, okay, I am the nearest kingsman. However, there is a kingsman that's nearer than me. So, say, for instance, if you have a, I don't know, he was, I guess, I don't know if he was an uncle. But say if you had an uncle, a first uncle. I'm sorry, a second uncle. So, Boaz was a second uncle. However, there was an uncle that was the first uncle. That means he would have had the right more because he was the first uncle. He was closer kinsman. That's what Boaz was saying. So, now I'm going to read verse, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. All right, and it says, And I thought to advertise the same. By it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it besides thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Alright, so this is um, Boaz speaking to the nearest kinsman now. 
Remember I told you he had a kinsman that was nearer than him. So this is Boaz speaking to him. So the kinsman said, I'll redeem it. After Boaz told him what he had to do, he said, I'll redeem it. All right, verse 5. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabites, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. All right. Boaz is also telling the king's man, okay, not only do you have to buy the land from Naomi, you also have to buy it from Ruth. You feel me? So, verse 6. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mere my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now, I'm just going to give you a backstory of, you know. All right, so Boaz, he's seen the, kings, the um, nearest kinsman. So he was pretty much telling him, like, uh, you the nearest kinsman, um, you'll have to pretty much buy the land from Naomi because she married our brother and he died. You feel me? And you will have to redeem the land from her. So the nearest kinsman said, sure, I could do that. I, I could redeem it. So <laughs> that's when Boaz says, not only do, but <laughs> what's that movie called? <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> That's when Boaz was pretty much saying, like, shoot, not only do you have to redeem it from Naomi, you have to redeem it from Ruth as well. And that's when the king was like, hold up now, <laughs> wait, <laughs> I can't do that, I can't redeem it. Now, did he just say he could redeem it? Now, all of a sudden, when he know he got to redeem it from Ruth as well, it's like, I can't redeem that. And he was thinking, okay, this is going to mess up my name, this is going to mess up my inheritance. I'm going to ruin my own inheritance. And if you read the chapter, like, look, I'm not going to read all that, but if you read it, you'll know that, um, okay, before um, Boaz told his near, the nearest king's man, you know, about the proposition, he got 10 witnesses to pretty much vouch to, like, vouch to see what was going on so they could be like a witness to prove as exactly what went what, what on. So at the end when the kingsman said he wasn't able to, um, you know, redeem it, redeem the land, um, he pretty much signed it off to Boaz by them doing like a, a, rage, a wager and the witnesses, which were the um, people that um, Boaz called previously, they went, there was a witness and they seen that now um, Boaz had the right to pretty much marry Ruth and so so forth. So that pretty much put me into mind of, okay, you see how the nearest kinsman, he had the um, opportunity to marry Ruth, you feel me, at first. Okay, if you look at it, you might be with somebody, you might have been with somebody for a long time. You know, years on years, you might have had kids together. You might have grew up together. You might have had ups and downs. And it's like you don't want to leave this person alone because you have history. You have a track record. The relationship could be toxic. The relationship could have, could be like God call you out of it. He don't want you to dwell in that, that relationship. But because of, you know, history, because of your, um, you've been with this person for a long time, it's like, Okay, I don't want to leave. You feel me? Just like the man said, I'll redeem it. But once he sees that, okay, that pretty much brings me to mind. Like, before I gave my life back to God, it's like, I was, I was in relationships that was toxic. And we both pretty much stayed together, even though it was toxic. You feel me? Because I was not living for God. And I'm pretty sure the person had a mindset saying, shoot, I'll redeem it. But... When I gave my life to God and wanted to live right, and they were still worldly, they couldn't redeem it no more. You feel me? How 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 much will it cost me? You feel me? By you, by me changing my life around, you feel me? You got to change your life around because what God say, being unequally yoked, that ain't gonna work. You feel me? Y'all both got to line up. Y'all both got to want God. So if one person want God and the other person don't want God, and I'm not talking about if you're married, you feel me? That's another scenario. But if you're single, you feel me? And y'all both are equally yoked, that's not going to work whatsoever. You feel me? Like I said in the book, in the Bible, 
I never even read this passage like this before, but it's like God just spoke to me when I was reading this. Like, okay, I'll redeem it. But time he he realized, shoot, not only will you have to purchase Naomi's land, you're going to have to purchase it from Ruth as well. And he was thinking, shoot, I'm going to mess my inheritance up. I can't redeem it. Okay. If a person gave their life to God, they no longer, you know, live for the world. Okay. You got to line up. Can you purchase it? Can you change your ways? Can you give your life to God? You feel me? Can you redeem it? You can't redeem it, now can you? To it's causing you too much. You feel me? You still want this world. This person ain't of the world no more. You feel me? They see things in God's eyesight. They want to change, they don't want to be the exact same way. You you still could redeem it, but can you redeem it now? Since they change? Nah, you can't redeem it. <laughs> Just like with the with the word of God, you feel me? He could redeem it because it was costing him too much. You feel me? He was thinking like, shoot, this is gonna mess up my my inheritance. Just like a person in the world, shoot, this if I be with you, you feel me? This is gonna mess up what I got going on. You feel me? I want to live for the world by being a Christian. You feel me? This is gonna mess up what I got going on. I can't redeem it. Like I said, I never even seen it in that light. Like, thank you, Lord, for just speaking through me, speaking to me. Because it's like every time I read a, a, a scripture in the Bible, he can me so many different aspects of it. You feel me? And it's God telling me, shoot, even though he was the nearest kingsman, he can redeem it. That's not what I have for you. You feel me? I had Boaz for Ruth. I didn't have the nearest kingsman. Let's say his name was Kevin. I didn't have Kevin for you. I had Boaz for you. He might have been the nearest kingsman, but that's not who I have for you. I have Boaz for you. That's the same thing with me, shoot, or anybody else, shoot. You might have been with this person for a long time. You might have been with Kevin for a long time. Y'all might have had kids together. Y'all might have been had ups and downs. You feel me? But this is not who I have for you. That's why he can't redeem it. Because it's not who I have for you. I have a Boaz for you. So you got to be patient. You feel me? Be patient. And I'm telling y'all, it's that same thing. I'm not saying anything because of, you feel me? I'm just rushing and doing what I want to do. I'm just telling y'all to be patient. No. I'm telling myself the same way. Because I'm being patient. Because in the past, I want to be patient whatsoever. It's like, go on to the next person very quickly. But I was I was hurt. In a lot of relationships, some of them was in relationships. Some of them was just son for less. You feel me? There wasn't a relationship. There was situationships. You feel me? So I'm pretty much telling y'all the same thing. You feel me? They come redeem it. You feel me? Because they're not the one. Just like the nearest kingsman, he wasn't the one. You feel me? Those people, just because y'all have history, they don't have, they don't mean that they're one. Wait for God. You feel me? Wait for your boy ass. That's pretty much all I had to say today. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel. Y'all, have a blessed day.